You know, I've known Governor Bentley for a long time, and um, he's always been committed to helping all the people of the state of Alabama. And as we talk about job creation here, I do want to mention when I say all the people, he has he's done extensive work in, in some of our poor counties you know, with the highest unemployment rates, such as Wilcox County, recruiting industry there to help create jobs. Uh, the governor, when the governor was elected, he's finishing his first term now, and he pledged to not take a salary until he brought Alabama to full employment. At that time, we were approaching 10%. Right now, we're at 6.5%. So I believe as we move forward over the next four years, he will reach his goal, which I believe is 5.2% unemployment. So he's, we've made great progress under his leadership. Um, our manufacturing sector has grown over, under Governor Bentley. Uh, we have made great gains in the automobile industry and the aerospace industry. And in February of this year, the governor recruited Remington Arms to expand manufacturing facilities, add new facilities in Huntsville, Alabama. 2,000 Alabamians will have jobs there, and of course there will be more coming associated with that plant. But this stuff just doesn't happen easily. You have to have vision. You have to plan ahead. And the governor's policy over the, uh, policies over the last several years to cut red tape, to become more business friendly, to fight federal government intrusion, has proven to industry that Alabama wants them to come here. He has set the table to allow himself to go out and recruit all of these industries. His leadership has just been very appreciated in the state of Alabama, and I can't wait for another productive four years. In, on, on September 15th, the governor created the Alabama Small Business Commission through executive order. Consistent with his mission, the commission will serve as an advisory body in formulating policies, encouraging innovation, discussing issues critical to the economic growth of small business, the commission will promote policies to assist new business startups and the expansion of existing businesses. So we're working on small businesses as well. Um, my governor understands the importance of having reliable, affordable energy to grow our state's economy. And I want to thank him and I appreciate his service to the SSEB over this past year. But prior to becoming governor, uh, Dr. Bentley served two terms in the Alabama House of Representatives. He was born in Shelby County, graduated from the University of Alabama School in Medicine, and was also commissioned captain of the United States Air Force. Governor Bentley is also co-chair of the National Gover Governors Association's Economic Development and Commerce Committee. He is also 2014 2014's state co-chair of the Appalachian Regional Commission. At this time, please join me in welcoming the chairman of the SSEB, the Honorable Governor Robert Bentley. Yeah, after I heard all these people that are going to be speaking, y'all better enjoy standing up. Because <laughs> you're going to be going to sleep about halfway through some of these. But you're not going to go, th you're not going to, go to sleep through my talk. Because I'm going to wake you up. All right? Uh, it, is a, it, is a, it really is an honor to, uh, to serve in capacities uh, like I'm doing here. I mean, actually, uh, as governors, <clears throat> we get to uh, be the uh, chairman of these uh, uh, great organizations like the Southern States Energy Board. Last year, I was chairman of the Interstate Oil and Gas Compact Commission. Next year, I'm going to be chairman of the uh, Interstate uh, Mining Compact Commission. And so I get, I get to be chairman, and I get to learn all these things. I get to... I get to know things that I've never known before. I told somebody the other day, as, as governor of Alabama, I know more about more things in this state than any human being in the state of Alabama. 
And that's true. I do. Because I deal with everything. I deal with everything that comes. I, I deal with 20 different things that come across my desk every day. I'm, I'm briefed on so many different issues. I love it. I love learning. I love learning things about oil sands. I mean, as a doctor, did I ever know what an oil sand was? No, I had no clue. Uh, but you know what? I know about it now. And, and, and I've learned these things. And and so uh, hopefully one of these days when you elect a governor, he's smart enough to learn something. You know, you don't want a stupid governor. I'll stop there. <laughs> but welcome today. Uh, this is, this, these next uh, two or two and a half days, I think will be very exciting for all of you that are interested in, uh, in energy. We're all interested in energy. And uh, just recently, I, I, I did a commercial for my, uh, for my campaign, and it said that EPA was going to cut your power bill. I mean, I mean, going to raise your power bill. I said, no, in Alabama, it's your light bill. It's your light bill. It's not your power bill. Now, industries, they pay power bills. Individuals pay light bills. And so you just have to know how to say it. Isn't that right, Quentin? War Eagle. Quentin, Quentin and I were on the radio together uh, this, uh, this weekend. And, uh, you know, in Alabama now, you folks, I know some of y'all from other states. In Alabama, you have to choose if you're an Alabama or an Auburn fan. I mean, you just don't have any choice. You're born that way. You're, you, you have to make a choice. And so now that I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Alabama and Auburn, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I, they say, well, we know you have to be neutral. And I said, no, you really don't have to be neutral. You just still have to love everybody. And, 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 that's, and that's, that's what I do. This is the 54th annual meeting of the uh, Southern States Energy Board. And it's, it's great to have it at uh, this historic uh, hotel here, the uh, Battle House Renaissance Hotel. And it's also great to have it in a great city like Mobile. And uh, Mobile is, is such a vital part of, of Alabama. And, uh, and it's beginning to really grow. It's uh, it, with our port here, with, uh, with the recruitment of Airbus to Mobile, uh, with Austell across here building all the littoral uh, aluminum ships that, uh, that are going to be part of our war fighters across this country. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to, uh, to be in, in this fantastic city here today. I want to thank also all of all the people who have... Uh, been willing to put money into this and to sponsor this meeting today. All of you who have done that, all of your companies, thank you. Uh, we could not do the things in government that we do every day without the support of, of businesses across the state of Alabama and across this country. Uh, not only do you support organizations like uh, Southern States Energy, but you also support me as governor uh, you help me so, so often, and uh, right now, our Alabama Workforce Council, where we're going to train more and more skilled workers for the state of Alabama, is headed up by Zeke Smith, who's at Alabama Power Company. And Zeke, thank you for what you do. And uh, so, so many of you help me every day uh, in the things that I try to do as, as governor, and I want you to know I could not do it without you. Leadership of this board, uh, as far as governors have concerned, I, I'm following Governor Bryant uh, from Mississippi. Uh, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin will be the uh, incoming uh, chairman uh, next year. Uh, in fact, it's interesting that he and I serve on a lot of committees together. Uh, he and I both at the present time serve on the National Governors Association Economic Development and Commerce Committee. Uh, I was the chairperson of that uh, committee this year, and he was the vice chair. Next year, he's going to be the chairman, I'm going to be the vice chair. So we're working very closely uh, on economic development for the National Governors Association, and I appreciate what he does, and he's going to be speaking to this group uh, later on. The <clears throat> theme of this conference, the theme of this conference is regional leadership and global influence. Now, during the meeting, 
Uh, we will discuss how science, technology, policy, and innovation is occurring in the South, and what the South is doing for the rest of the country and the rest of the world. In the South, we produce half of the domestic energy, and we have 40% of our population. Three of the top five coal, oil, and natural gas producing states are located in the South, and seven of our Southern State Energy Board states are among the nation's top 10 states for manufacturing jobs per capita. In fact, Alabama has been one of the four states uh, over, since 1990 where manufacturing has been the number one way of earning a living uh, since, since all of that time, every year in Alabama, manufacturing is number one. It's so important as we try to put into existence what I have in Alabama, which is a, a plan called Accelerate Alabama, where we concentrate on 11 different industries. Uh, we recruit industries, we retain companies that are here, and we also renew our, our economy with innovation and entrepreneurship just recently, I have created the Small Business Commission. The Small Business Commission will help new businesses because every big company that was started one day was a small company. And so to become a large company, you've got to be a small company first. And so we have to help these small industries, and that's, that's what we're doing in Alabama. But manufacturing is so vitally important, and it's so important that we have reliable and secure and affordable energy. If we do not have that, that cannot help us as far as the environment that we're trying to, to create in this state uh, to recruit new industries, retain the companies, and, and to renew our, 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 our economy in the state of Alabama. SEIB member states have created a robust and innovative energy supply that includes all of the traditional fuel resources as well as renewable energy and energy efficiency and non-traditional resources that are changing our position as a world energy supplier. But, let me say this, never be sucked in to all of this propaganda about renewable energy. I can tell you that that is not going to replace fossil fuel for hundreds of years to come. <laughs> By 2035, 80%, 80% of all of our energy is still going to come from fossil fuels. That's by 2035. In your lifetime, in your lifetime, and in your children's lifetime, in your grandchildren's lifetime, we're still going to be dependent on fossil fuel. So let's use what we have, folks. And I can tell you, I am a very strong proponent of the use and the development of fossil fuels. Today in America, we're competitive because of what we're producing as far as our energy is concerned. And I want to highlight a few of the things that we're doing in Alabama. Let me first talk about, it's going to be talked about later on in this, in this meeting, is oil sands. There are three states in America that have oil sands. Now, I know I signed an MOU last year with Mississippi. Mississippi doesn't have very much. But we just wanted to include them, so we, we signed an MOU with them. And, uh, but most of the oil sands that we're talking about in Alabama are in Alabama. And in 1980, it was estimated that we, were, that we had 7.5 billion barrels of oil in this state in the form of oil sands, up around Hartzell. I mean, it's up on the surface, goes across the surface. I was told, I believe I was told that the Indians used to burn the rocks because it's like creosote. And so it's there, folks. We've just got to find a way to, to extract it and do it environmentally friendly. And we're going to do that. 
We're going to make sure we do that. And in fact, we put a million dollars, we put it all under our oil and gas board so that they will control it. And, and we put a million dollars and it's coming in, that million dollars is going to be starting to be spent in about two or three days. Uh, we're going to put a million dollars into it this year and we'll continue to do that because this is a source of income for the state of Alabama that we cannot ignore. And we're not going to ignore it. And that is a lot of oil. Three states, Alabama, Utah, and Alaska are the states where they have large pockets of oil sand. So we must take advantage of this. Dr. Nick, too, does a fantastic job. He's here today, and he's going to speak to you all later on uh, in the meeting. Uh, we want to thank our Canadian partners for helping us from Alberta. Uh, they've invited uh, members of uh, Southern States Energy Board to come up and visit uh, Alberta and to see how they're doing this in Alberta. Uh, in the state of Utah, they're beginning to, uh, to make progress on this. So we all need to work together so that we can extract the oil that is there and do it in an environmentally friendly way. Our Southern States Energy Board manages the most successful integrated carbon capture, transportation, and storage program in the nation with its Southeastern Regional Carbon Sequestration Partnership, or CCARB. Right here in Mobile County, Alabama's power plant, Barry, is demonstrating the complete carbon program of capturing CO2 from the flue gas, transporting it over 12 miles through a pipeline to a storage reservoir and storing it there and monitoring it so that the potential is there so that it can be used later for enhanced oil recovery in some of the older oil fields that we have around southwest Alabama, around Citronelle. This is an important program that we're doing here in this, in this state. Uh, this project has received many awards, and this innovation is, is unprecedented, and we're very proud of that. There are other parts of the country that are doing some similar things, like over in Kemper County, Mississippi. A uh, southern company is putting a state-of-the-art, uh, innovative-type work in the, the, the transport reactor in their 582 megawatt integrated gasification combined cycle power plant. Now, I want you to repeat that four times. <laughs> this power plant will produce not only low carbon electricity, but also income streams from a variety of different products. Carbon dioxide, chemicals such as sulfuric acid, ammonia for fertilizer, as well as electricity. Other countries are interested in, in this uh, also, Poland and India and China. Uh, so we have a worldwide interest in, in this type of innovative thinking. Coal, and I want to hit coal, but I want to say positive things about coal. Over 110 million metric tons of, of coal are being sent across the globe. It goes to the Netherlands, to the UK, to China. These are all our largest recipients of U.S. coal, with the European Union importing 45% of the coal that is sent out from our ports. Our port of Mobile here uh, is a very much a vital part of that. In 2012, the Port of Mobile was the fourth largest seaport for exporting U.S. coal. Most of it was bound to Europe and to South America. The Port of Mobile is an integral part of this state's economy for both imports and exports, and Alabama continues to export a growing number of products from many of our industry sectors here in the state. Natural gas. Natural gas uh, is, is very important. We have now become an exporter of natural gas. Up until two or three years ago, we were still importers of natural gas. Now we export it, and we're continuing to be a more energy-independent nation because of things like natural gas. Our process of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling are opening new frontiers of energy development that change the nation from being an energy importer, as I just said, to being an energy exporter. 
our FRAC focus that we did through the IOGCC, uh, our state's first program that we did through the IOGCC. Uh, these are things that we have worked on and worked together with our Southern States Energy Board uh, to try to make sure that, that we do things correctly and do fracturing correctly uh, so that the environmentalists can be satisfied and so that we do things that, that does not hurt our environment. We don't want to do that. None of us want to do that. Our Gulf states continue to innovate in offshore drilling techniques. And these techniques are distributed throughout the world. It allows us to safely and economically extract even greater quantities of oil and natural gas. And by the way, we have so much of oil and natural gas off of the coast of the southern states. I'm also a member of our Outer Continental Shelf Organization for Governors. And uh, we work, we're working on this with all of our coastal states, including North Carolina, who uh, Governor McCrory is the chairperson of that right now. And so there are vast amounts of oil and gas off the coast of our nation. And we need to take advantage of it, but we need to do it safely. We don't want another explosion of, an, of a of a a drilling rig off of the coast and cause all the problems that have occurred uh, over the last few years as far as the, uh, the BP oil spill that's affected all of us on the southern coast. And of course, uh, we also, uh, our southern states and our coastal states believe that we should be able to take more of the money that comes from the reserves and, and all the, the money that comes from that because we take the brunt if there ever is an oil spill, Nebraska shouldn't get the same amount of money that Alabama gets because they're not going to get an oil spill. So when, when, we, when we do the things uh, and, and we collect the taxes off of that, then southern states, those that take the brunt of that, if it ever occurs, and hopefully it never will occur again, uh, we should be the ones who actually get the most money for that. And we're pushing for that right now. But this calls for the development and the construction of additional pipelines to support the anticipated level of operation and the combined cycle units already online and those that will, that will be built over the next five to ten years. Nuclear power. Nuclear power is one of the other ways that we produce energy in Alabama and in the South. Uh, and in fact, nuclear power, we produce approximately 50% of all the nuclear power in the United States, in the southern states. And we have a number of plants uh, in, the, in the southern area. We have a, plants here in Alabama. And we have some in Tennessee and other, in other parts of, of, of the southern uh, region. So nuclear power is very important. We also have uh, hydroelectric in Alabama. And if you see the great seal of Alabama, I don't see one in here. But Governor Bibb, many, many years ago, and the people who designed the great seal of Alabama in 1819, the way they designed the great seal of Alabama, you know what they put on it? The rivers because this state has probably the most navigable number of miles of navigable rivers of any state in the country. And we take advantage of that. Uh, we produce power with that. We produce power in Alabama in four different ways. Obviously coal is number one, natural gas number two, nuclear number three, and hydroelectric number four. And we're going to continue for years to come to produce energy that way. And we must make sure that we do it the right way, but we must make sure that we are able to take advantage of the natural resources that we have within our states and not be limited by EPA. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about EPA. 
I talked a little bit about it last night. I mentioned it just very briefly. You know, uh, those of you who took biology and botany in high school and some of you in college, and of course, I'm a physician, and I understand that when you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. And when you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants with photosynthesis takes in the carbon dioxide, and through that process, they produce oxygen. So it's a cycle. So we have to have both. But I truly believe that if EPA had their way, they would limit the time that you breathe every day. <laughs> and how many times you breathe every day. So you runners out there, they go out here and do all this jogging and stuff, y'all are in trouble. Because they are so, they believe in this science that someone has designed that carbon dioxide causes all the problems of the world. I'm sure it causes some problems, but it doesn't cause all of our problems. And folks, we're gonna to have to take advantage of what we have in this country, and we have to do that in order for people to get a job and to be able to feed their families. And we cannot let the federal government keep us from building companies in using the natural resources that we have and, and by limiting those natural resources to produce energy because, as I said, secure, reliable, inexpensive energy is one of the reasons that the South is doing so well right now. And that is one of the reasons that we must push back on EPA and all these rules and regulations that they're trying to put into place. Now, I had dinner at the White House with Gina McCarthy in February. She's a very nice lady. She really is. And we talked for about an hour and a half at, during that dinner. And uh, so we got to know each other fairly well. And so as things have developed uh, over the last year and the this 30% reduction in CO2 emissions as it's put in place. She gave me a call about a month ago. She said, Governor, I want to tell you about this 30% emissions that we're putting into place. And so as I talked to her, I said, Gina, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, who comes up with these crazy ideas? She said, what do you mean? I said, why couldn't it have been 18% or 20% or 25% or 28? I, who came up with 30%? Who came up with this? Why did you come up with this? She said, Governor, I really don't know. I said, let me tell you, Gina. What y'all could not do in Congress when you could not pass the American Clean Energy and Security Act, so-called cap and trade, you're now trying to put into place with rules and regulations. And what you're doing is you are trying to shut down the jobs of every coal miner in the United States. And that's your goal because y'all hate coal and you hate fossil fuel. And I said, do you not care about the jobs that it'll affect? Do y'all not care about that? Well, she was about ready to get off the line by then. They don't think through some of the rules and regulations that they put into place. Now, we all want clean air. We all remember, those of us who lived in Alabama in the 19... I've been living here since 1943, so that's how old I am. 
Let me tell you, we all remember Fairfield, Alabama. Those of you from Alabama, how you would drive through in the 1950s and 1960s and you couldn't even see the sky because it smelled so bad and it looked so bad. And, you know, we remember that. We all remember that. No one wants that. But it's clean now. It's clean. And, and we've done a tremendous job. All of the companies have done a tremendous job uh, in, in cleaning up our environment. But there's a limit to what we can do and still use the natural resources that we have in this state and in this country. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to use science that's, that is not exact, it's not proven, and I'm not going to argue one way or the other about CO2 emissions, that, but I know this, they don't know any more about it than you and I know. It's all a guess. It's all a guess. And I will say that we have to allow the people of our state to get a job. And the federal government does not have a right to come into the state of Alabama and to tell us that we can't use the natural resources that we have in this state. So I'm going to continue to push back, and I want all the other governors. That's why we've written letters. I wrote a letter. Uh, there were six governors that signed a letter uh, to the EPA director in uh, February. Uh, I just signed another letter from uh, Republican Governors Association uh, that uh, dealt with a, a very extensive issue dealing with uh, uh, this emissions amount that they have set. And what we need, what we need in this country is to realize that these agencies don't make laws. And we need to make sure that they don't make laws. Congress is the only one that makes laws. And if I were the President of the United States, I would tell my EPA director that they better back off. That's what I'd tell them, because they work for me if I'm the President. That's all he has to do. All he has to do is say, we're not doing that. And you know what? They wouldn't do it. But we don't have that right now. So we've got to work on that. The South, though, has a diverse and rich amount of resources. We have so many of our states in this organization that have so many great resources. West Virginia and Kentucky, predominantly coal. South Carolina, nuclear. Mississippi and Florida get the majority of their electrical generation from natural gas. And the region as a whole has a balance between coal, 40%, natural gas, 34%, followed by nuclear, 19%, and they didn't even mention Alabama here. I didn't in my speech, but, but we have hydroelectric. And in fact, I asked Gina McCarthy, I said, Gina, you don't even give us any credit. She said, we're giving you credit for some of these things like carbon sequestration and all these type things. I said, that's great. I said, but you don't even give us any credit for hydroelectric. I said, y'all count that as neutral. I said, there's nothing could be cleaner than water flowing over a dam and making turbines turn. I said, what could be cleaner than that? And y'all don't even get a, give us credit for it. So she wanted to get off the line, and uh, so. But my last, my last thing that I told her was, I said, Gina, listen. I said, I sure did enjoy having dinner with you the other night up in Washington, which I did. She's a nice lady. And it's not her fault. It's the federal government's fault, and we need to change it. But over the next two days, y'all are going to be talking about those things. You're going to hear a lot of this. That, uh, that I've talked about today. And, and we need organizations like Southern States Energy Board. We need organizations like this, like our, uh, our Interstate uh, Oil and Gas Compact Commission, uh, our Interstate uh, Mining Compact Commission. We need organizations like this to, so that we as states can stick together and put pressure back on the federal government. And at some point, Make them realize 
that states created the federal government, not the other way around. Now that's going to take a while, and we're going to have a lot of pushing to do. But let me tell you, it's coming. Leadership in this country right now is not coming from Washington. Leadership in this country right now is coming from the states. And people across this nation look to the states. They don't even like the federal government. And they don't trust the federal government. The next president of the United States ought to be a governor because he's done something. They don't even like congressmen. They don't like senators. I know we're going to have a senator that's going to talk to us, and I love Senator Jeff Sessions because I got him to come and speak to y'all, speak to you. But the people of the country are, are disenfranchised, and, 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 they're, and they're disenchanted with, with what's going on in Washington. So we need some leadership, and we need it. When you look at the states and see what we're doing on the state level, that can be translated because we are laboratories of change, and we do the things in the states, and we can show the federal government how it can be done on a national level and not just on a state level. And we're going to continue to do it in Alabama. There are a lot of other states that are doing the same thing that we're doing in Alabama, and we're going to continue that. And this is a great country, and we're going to continue to work to make it an even greater country. But it will continue to be great only if we are leaders. We cannot be dependent on countries that don't like us. We cannot. And we're becoming more independent with our energy, and that is vital. And I want to thank y'all for what y'all do. I hope that, uh, I hope we have good meetings. You enjoy them. Stay awake. And if you have to just get up and wake yourself up and drink a little coffee, then do that. If I had to sit through two and a half days of meetings, let me tell you, it'd be tough. <laughs> I do it all the time now, uh, but, but at least I have a different subject every few minutes. Of course, y'all are going to do that too, aren't you? All right, so thank y'all for letting me be here. Thank you for letting me be the chairman of this, uh, this organization. And let's continue to work together to make not only Alabama a great state, all of these states that we represent great states, to make our nation a great nation. So thank y'all very much. God bless you.